Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Chaos Gate with me, Bragaton. Let's take on our first Reaper, Agar the Benevolent. Danger level extreme. We've located Agar the Benevolent here. Dubbed the Benevolent Uncle for the wide range of afflictions he spreads. It is also said he travels to the host of cherished nephews. Up against corruption level 5, Poxus, and Agar the Benevolent himself. And we found him. Reaper of the Poxus strain, Agar the Benevolent. A greater demon embodying corruption and disease. He is known to consort with a small army of Nurgling nephews. Our objective is to subdue Agar. We get plus 5 requisition, minus 5 corruption, and armory access. I'm going to give him the silencer that's better against demons. Since we're fighting a greater demon. Now the question is, do I want a Paladin or a Justicar? Pardon. Bring the Paladin. I do think a Justicar would be better for this, but I like the Paladin, so. Worst case scenario, we lose. So we'll do it in style. Well, well, well. What do we have here? Pilgrims on a holy journey to receive their benedictions. Come now. Bow before your rightful king, and I will bestow you all with such wonderful gifts. Commander, be warned. The demon's vile spawn already infest this planet. Hmm. Such an ungrateful tome wins its way from above. This one, I sense, despises my loyal flock. Unfairly. It can bring to bear hordes of those vile nerdlings. You must be wary. If you don't accept what I offer, then I must regretfully request you depart my realm. No? A pity, but you will meet a fine sum for my nephews. They are always ever so hungry. Alright, so I'm not sure what this is. Can't inspect it from here. There's hazards all over the place. We have to avoid that using these bridges. Let me see what this is. In an instant. So this spawns the Nurglings. Now let's get rid of that. On the way. That would have served the sacred birthing ground. 
Good work, Commander. Purge them all. With haste. Moving now, I have claimed this wretched bloom essence. Let's just see what he does too. So he has Nurgling Spew. Agar consumes Nurglings and sets a blast over area of fort range 14. Next turn, afflict random 100% afflict vulnerable and knockback. The random affliction, vulnerable and knockback. Uh, come home, my nephews. Agar consumes Nurglings and heals based on the number consumed. Random target point is restored. He's immune to blinded, crazed, dominated, panicked, plagued, knocked back, and banish. Nurgling Swarm. Agar commands his nephews to attack your knights. It'll damage based on the number of Nurglings nearby. And then go forth, my nephews. Agar summons five Nurglings at the end of his turn. Defend our uncle. When shot with a ranged attack, if Nurglings are nearby, Agar can consume Nurglings to cancel the attack. Doomsday Bell. Agar consumes Nurglings and summons a number of Plague Bearers based on the number consumed. And Plague Flail. Strike adjacent targets to deal 7 damage, inflict weakened for 2 turns, then knock back, make Norse cover. Okay. Great forward enough. This is coming with me! Nurglings may seem a minor pest, but they will fast prove overwhelming. Notification. The source of these abominations have been codified as spawners. They must be purged. Come, my nephew. Don't be shy. <laughs> I have some new playmates for you. Okay. Well, that's what our interceptor is for. Yeah. With alacrity! the Emperor. Onward, brothers! Oh, he has a ton of health. Okay. Mm. 
say the Nurgling consume that. You must clear those pests from your firing vector. They sacrifice themselves for their master. I mean, he still took damage. What does the effect do? It says he can, not that he will. He definitely took damage there, so I'm gonna do that again. The enemy weakens. Eyes off. That's annoying. Standing ready. I have seen your weakness. Oh, that's right. I was supposed to do this first. My wrath is restored, brother. Ready to serve. Vengeance! I aim true. Impressive tactic. We must bathe them all in purifying flame. Oh! I am with you. Celebrating the blooms in pending morbus. Out of my way! Do you like my bountiful miasma? Come, 
Stay a while. It will imbue you with a blessed power. Does that not affect him? He doesn't lose any health off of it, so I guess not. It sucks, I can't see the... Nerglings. So small. Yes, sir. Pretty sure he consumed all the ones that were around him, so I don't have to worry about those right now. Sanctified my rounds. You will fall. <laughs> so I think he goes down this turn. Duty fulfilled. Concern. Meddling infestation lingers. Unorthodox deployment of exterminators recommended for absolute certainty. It is done, Dominus. Be at peace. Those foul spawn will not survive long without their broodmaster. Yes, truly. We must recover the prime seed and pursue the others. Denial. Risk of infestation remains. If I must. I will venture below personally and purge the immediate area before we return anything to the ship. I feel like his one ability, where the Nurglings are supposed to block the range attack, wasn't working appropriately. Let's just reduce the damage. Instead of negating it altogether. I think it was easier just to go after Agar himself and ignore these spawners. Right, so tier 3, well, what do we have here? Break to Interceptor. Tier 3 Storm Bolter. Created to 6 damage. Upgrade it for a 50% chance of rapid reload, so it can reload automatically. And 20% crit chance, it's pretty good. Move speed is good. 30% focus.
Oh, knockback with a halberd. I'll grab this. I think I have a few knights still in tier 1 power armor. I think that movement will be good. Alright, our apothecary. I gave him more ammo for his servo skulls because that purifies coming really handy. This is our purgator. Yeah, I typically don't want armor pierce. I mean, it's good for finishing off enemies. I'd rather break the armor so that my other allies can get in there and finish him off if he doesn't. No upgrade. Astral aim for plus one crit damage. And wants to get mental focus. It'd be really good on him. He has a high crit chance, so. Alright, and our paladin. Uh, plus one crit damage on Hammerhand. I can see this being handy, especially when we get the upgrade for it where it reduces the AP cost by one so it's a free action. Let's get the Emperor's Will, so target a knight at any range to gain plus two willpower. Well, hold on, this also adds plus one crit damage. I want to do this. Yeah, so when I select this, it unlocks another crit damage when it's warp charged. Huh. Let's go ahead and grab that. It is done. Your prognosticars signal a weakening in the strain. With a single stroke, we have ended its spread. A victory, yet we are not Fenrisians. We have no time for revelry while the Scourge remains. Accurate. Four strains of the Bloom remain. Yes, yes. There is still much work to be done. Let us not forget that self-professed Warden of the Bloom, Cadex. He will not sit idly while we wreck his master's plans. We will be ready. Query. What of the Prime Seed? Analysis suggests it is an artifact of significant power. I have already put a mind to that very matter, Dominus. With sufficient study, it could be reworked into a tool for our crusade, after the proper cleansing rituals, of course. Fortuitous. Unburdened by command, the Brother Purifier is available to assist you. Oh yes, quite. Exactly what I was thinking, Dominus. I will send for you, Ektar, when you are needed.
All right, before I forget... Ooh. All right, uh, let's speak to our companions or advisors. Can I help you, Commander? Oh, we've successfully purged a Reaper. You sound as if you had doubts, Commander. Perhaps next time you'll have a little more faith in those who serve as the Emperor's left hand. Follow my lead. We'll destroy the other four strains as well. All right. I find I know very little about you, Inquisitor. Your own existence is shrouded in secrecy. Huh. Is that not somewhat hypocritical of you, Commander? You yourself remain a closed book in our conversations. Yes, we're well trained in reserve and restraint. <laughs> you are forgiven. It is not in my nature to speak about myself. And I am not accustomed to small talk either. Still, our exchanges will never leave these secret halls is reassuring. Ask of me what you will. Are all in the Inquisition as ruthless as you? My mentor was stern, and so I followed his lead. Not all of them. He didn't play well with others, and neither do I. So you work alone. Because most Inquisitors have a... Uh, what is it called? Like a group of people they work with. Typically unorthodox allies. Um... Because they can recruit whoever they want or whoever they need for their missions. And so they have a, a posse, essentially, that they go around and do inquisitorial things with. So you work alone. I call in support when needed. That's why I'm here with you, after all. It is true, though, that I rarely work with my other colleagues. Too many inquisitors in one sector tends to end in, end in misunderstanding and bloodshed. A few share my Thorian outlook. You mentioned being a Thorian. Yes. The Golden Throne cannot sustain the Emperor forever. It is only sensible to seek a means of rebirth for the Master of Mankind, for he's lost to us for all time. Yeah, they're considered radicals by a lot of people. <laughs> the, uh, was it the Star Child Theory? Alright. I must return to work. Nurgle toils tirelessly. Using the Bionetic Equation, I have already analyzed all possible outcomes of this exchange. But you may proceed. We recovered a prime seed. Any insight into its origin? It is the claw of a relic, corrupted long ago. Uh, where is he at? Oh, and use to spawn the smaller seeds we have seen so far. I believe the Inquisitor is correct. If we purge of its taint, then it can be brought back to a purpose that serves the machine god. There are many on Mars that would give up their mechandendrites to study these. Box exchange parameters updated. Has the Edict faced anything like the Reapers before? We were involved in the banishment of the Buboessian princeling of Quarter Rule 5. Nothing quite as disgusting, but the Edict has faced all manner of creatures in its long history. Only shortly before you joined us, and he read the rest of that. Uh, what happened? The gaseous fumes congealed with fermenting algae, creating a vector for the Buboessian princeling to enter the Materium. Alterval was an agri-world uh, orbiting a gas giant. My generator colleagues recommended using a pacifying agent, a foam formulated to separate the algae and unbind the demon. This would have been the most efficient strategy and would have protected the Imperium's assets. However, gas with a high methane content burns fast and bright, Nectar was in no mood for mercy when he kindled the princeling with his purifying flame. Box exchange parameters updated. Go now. I must tend to the needs of the ship. The halo of your Aegis is strong. Are you ready? You seem somber. You sense the Reaper's lingering warp energy. That was merely the first of five. No. Our brothers have cast it back into the warp. You have done well. We have little time for such self-congratulatory notions. Yes, if you like. The trials on Titan do not prepare you for a greater demon. I remember banishing my first greater entity. I was newly promoted, assigned to the fallen world of Iconia to support the Inquisition in handling a Zinchian demon, a feathered lord. This creature had possessed a rebel leader and nearly driven his followers to unseat the corrupt and despicable authority that ruled the planet. 
What happened? My actions were tempered by my own lack of confidence in command. I knew what the Lord of Change is capable of, pushing the minds of all in proximity. The Inquisitors were more concerned with the success of their little rebellion than they were for the safety of Iconia. They assured me they would dispense with the creature quietly once the ruling power was deposed. I take it that it... I take it that didn't happen. I was called back to the planet much later to clean up the mess. We bathed that demon in his air fire, but the cost had already been paid. Two Inquisitors and countless innocent souls carried through a rift in the warp to some Zinchian domain. I've been serving my penance ever since. You couldn't have known what would happen. We cannot afford to hesitate in our duty. Come now, Commander. I knew then as you know now. The forces of chaos are not to be trifled with. The fate of the Imperium lies balanced in the head of a pin, and one simple lapse in judgment could tip us all towards eternal damnation. The fate of the galaxy does not rest on your shoulders. No, it rests on yours. The Edict is a formidable weapon in our war against chaos. While my penance for Iconia denies me a glorious death in battle, I am committed to guiding and supporting your command from within her walls. This is why you did not take up command. Yes, though even that is not punishment enough. It would seem. Now we must contend with this Inquisitor, eh? Throne. A catastrophe on Usaria should have ended her authority. It appears we must yet rely on her talents for her to locate this threat. Remember Iconia, Commander. His Inquisitors know much, but their vision can be clouded. You should not permit them to cloud your own. As you wish. Go with the wisdom of Janus, brother. Alright, so we can go here, and then I make it to one of these other ones. And I think we're going to go to this one after, right? Another tier 3... Oh, that's right. We got tier 3... Tier 3 Storm Bolter I want to equip. Let me think. Who's part of my A team? So, Boar's Storm. Storm. That's a tier 3, right? Yeah, here he is. A tier 3. Uh, one of my apothecaries are probably due. Fog. It's more base damage, a little bit of crit. I like that. Chance to gain more willpower, though. I mean, you'll be breaking even since you have to use Cybolt to activate it. With Cybolt, that's plus four damage. I think I'm going to keep that on him. Alright, who's next? Yeah, we'll give it to him instead. I can't afford that one, but the... Oh, can't afford that either. Ah. And we also got power armor. Uh, let's see. We'll start with... Interceptor here. What does he have equipped? So he has tier 3. He has tier 3 as well. He has tier 1. There's more willpower. The two willpower is nice. What does the other one have?
What's all these here too? I shouldn't have wasted all those. It's fine. Oh yeah, so if we go here, I think we'd still make it to one of these other planets. At least I'm hoping so. But we'll see. Cool. Dalmar got an augmentic, uh, augmentic elbow, plus one crit damage for melee. I think he has the Narthesium that has increased crit chance against organics, right? Dalmar. Might as well get these, get these upgrades since we don't find a lot of Narthosiums as rewards. I might swap these Narthosiums around. Since he has the increased crit chance now. What is his talent? He has Sure Strike. That's. Yeah. Absolutely. So he gets plus two crit damage. His first strike is his starting talent, and he just got the augmentic elbow. So you get the base damage is terrible though. It's only a twenty percent chance of crit. Uh, that's a tough one. I think it's still better. Alright, where's our other apothecary at? Oh. Alright, Void Shields 2 are complete. Deeper analysis of the Void Shields revealed the existence of several weak spots where protection was almost non-existent. The layers of shielding were miscalibrated and so out of phase with one another. After completing the 12 rites of Ascendant Harmonization, I am pleased to report that the Edict has complete Void Shield coverage. Alright, we don't have a lot of these guys, so what can we afford? A whole lot of nothing. That's not going to change after this one, but maybe after this one. This one has better rewards. This one... Can't make it to another one anyway. Shoot. Yeah, they initially had planned it out. I thought there was a path from here to here. And I would have made it with if that was the case, but it's not. So we won't get any servidors this turn, but we'll get a tier three storm shield. And a potential tier three grenade. So that's something. Oh, we can just make it to this one. Okay, perfect. Well, good. I was going to go to this one. But since we won't make that one... I mean, this is a greater priority since it's gaining three corruption versus just one. But the Storm Bolter and Terminator Armor, I thought were better. But, uh... That'll do. Alright, I'm going to call it here. Uh, next episode... We'll take care of the corruption here on Balador 6. And then we'll hop over to Mebus 5. Or Mebus. Mebus. Yeah, whatever it is.
All right, but for now, thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.